Okay, let's get after it. First things we're gonna do is come over to our calculator and press mode. We're gonna scroll down. We wanna make sure that we're in degrees, not radians, so press enter. And then you can come back out and press clear. All right, now we're off to the races. Question number one, we've got a right triangle. We're given an angle and we're given a side. The angle is 50.2 degrees and the side is 28.6 centimeters. So let's break this thing down. We've got three interior angles, which have to be equal to 180. And we know two of them. So let's solve for the one that we don't know. Let's come over here and say 180 degrees minus our 90 degree angle minus our 50.2 degree angle is gonna leave us with 39.8 degrees. So our angle B is equal to 39.8 degrees. Okay, now we need to solve for our two triangle sides here. Let's use angle B that we just solved for because we have B, we have the opposite side, and we have a hypotenuse. There are three variables and we know two of them. So opposite side and hypotenuse, that's gonna be a sine function. So we're gonna say sine B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Let's sub some values in. Sine of 39.8 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is unknown, so that's gonna be little b, divided by the hypotenuse, which is known, so that's 28.6. Okay, now let's use the calculator and find out what the sine of 39.8 is. So we'll say sine of 39.8 is equal to 0 0.64. So we'll rewrite down here. 0 0.64 is equal to B over 28.6. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 28.6. Okay, now on this side we can cancel this one, cancel this one, and we're going to be left with B is equal to 28.6 times 0 0.64. Therefore, B where you leave the SPS log on and you start commenting substance of other codes, he may work. 28.6 times 0.64 is 18.304. 18.304. Okay. So we have side B. Now we'll solve for side A. We can still use the angle B. Last time we used the sine function because it was opposite over hypotenuse. This time we'll use the cosine function because it'll be adjacent side over hypotenuse. So let's get down here and we'll say cosine of B is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Let's sub in some values. We're gonna get cosine of 39.8 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which we don't know, that's A, divided by the hypotenuse, which we do know is 28.6 centimeters. Okay, let's do some calculator magic. Let's go cosine of 39.8. That's gonna give us 0 0.768. So we're gonna have 0 0.768 is equal to A divided by 28.6. Now we're just going to multiply both sides by 28.6. And we will cancel these two. And we'll be left with A equal to 28.6 times 0 0.768. All right, let's check it out. A then is equal to... 28.6 times 0.768. And 28.6 times 0 0.768 is equal to 21.96. Just to see that, you normally get a run 21.96. And there it is. So 
This question asks us to solve for two unknown sides given an angle and one side. So we use the sine and cosine functions of this angle B to do it. Okay, question two. This time we have our three interior angles with two unknown angles and two known sides. So when we have two known sides, we're going to do a slightly different operation to solve for the angles. Last time we used the angle to solve for the side. This time we're going to use the sides to solve for the angles. So let's go after something that we know. Three and four. We can use the Pythagorean theorem here to find out what the angle of this one was and then go through our whole sine and cosine thing that we did before. But we don't really need to do that because it would just take too much time. So let's just go ahead and say, let's check out angle B. Angle B has a opposite and an adjacent. That means we can use a tangent function. So we'll say tan of B is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So B is unknown, so we'll stick with tan of B is equal to the opposite, which is three, over the adjacent, which is four. So now we can come down, make this a little easier. We can say tan B is equal to three divided by four, 0 0.75. All right, so now we're gonna multiply both sides by the inverse tangent. That's gonna cancel the tangents on the left side and it's gonna leave us with B equal to the tan negative one of 0 0.75. So let's go check that out. To do an inverse, you have your sine, cosine, tangents here. To do the inverse, they're the ones in blue, which means you press the blue button to activate it. So we'll press the blue button and then we'll go to tangent. And now we have tan inverse, the tan to the negative one, and that's going to be of 0 0.75. Close that out, 36.87. So B is equal to 36.87 degrees. Okay, this question just wants us to solve for the interior angles. So we know that Angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180. We know angle A. No, we do not know angle A. Angle B, we just found it. It was 36.87. And we know that angle C is 90 degrees. So we just need to subtract 36.87, subtract 90. So over here, we'll subtract 36.87, subtract 90. These will cancel, these will cancel, and we'll be left with angle A equal to 180 minus 36.87 minus 90. And that's gonna give us 53.13, so 53.13 degrees. Final answer. Okay, question number three. This one's gonna deal with some vectors here. So we have this vector V, which is unknown, and we have its components VX, which is along the X axis, and we have another component VY, which is along the Y axis. Now, the thing that makes a vector a vector is that it has magnitude and direction. Magnitude meaning whatever the length of this thing is and the direction of it, as in, how far up it's pivoted from the origin point here. So theta, so theta tells us the direction and V tells us the magnitude. We need to solve for both. We can treat it like a right triangle because we have a 90 degree angle here. So what do we know about right triangles? We know that this side squared plus this side squared is equal to this side squared. So let's get after this nice and easy. We're gonna say Vx squared plus Vy squared is equal to our vector V, 
squared. This little arrow that I put on top indicates that this variable is a vector, meaning it has both direction and magnitude. Okay, so just that little arrow, don't get confused by it. It's just a symbol. Okay, VX was 34. So we'll have 34 squared. And VY was 16, that'll be plus 16 squared equal to our vector V squared. So let's do some quick calculator magic. 34 times 34 is 1156 plus 16 times 16 is 256 equal to vector V squared. So let's add these two up. 256 plus 1156 is equal to 1412 equal to vector V squared. Now let's just flip this around so that we're solving for vector V squared. So we'll say vector V squared equal to 1412. Now to get rid of this exponent, we'll just take the square root of both sides. So when we take the square root of something that's raised to the power of two, we're just left with that thing itself. So the square root of vector V squared is just vector V. And that's gonna be equal to the square root of 1412. So come over to your calculator. The square root is right here, the little blue guy. So we'll say second square root of 1412. Enter 37.58. 37.58. So now we have the magnitude of vector V. All right, and now we need to solve for the theta or the direction. You've seen triangles up until this point using interior angles of like A, B, and C, and this one says theta. Do not get confused by that. A, B, theta, they're all just empty placeholder variables. So right now we know that our vector V is 37.58 centimeter. This is just your basic tree stuff. We have an angle. We have a side and we have another side. So let's do angle, opposite side, hypotenuse side. That's a sine function, pretty easy. Okay, so we'll say sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And let's sub in our values here. We do not know theta, so it's gonna stay sine theta equal to the opposite side, which is 16 divided by the hypotenuse side, which is 37.58. Okay, let's simplify this. We're gonna be left with sine theta equal to my calculator 16 divided by 37.58. That's 0 0.426. So 0 0.426. All right, and now since our unknown is attached to the sign, we're gonna multiply both sides by inverse sign. Multiply both sides by inverse sign. And this inverse sign and this sign are going to cancel, which is going to leave us with theta equal to inverse sine of 0 0.426, which means theta is going to be equal to, remember, we press the second sine negative one. There it is. And it was 0 0.426. Enter, that tells us 25.21. So theta is 25.21 degrees. This is the... This is the direction of vector V. The magnitude was the hypotenuse, vector V, and the direction is the angle, theta. All right. Okay, number four. This is some algebraic operations here. We have an expression, and we're asked to solve for x. So when we have a constant, 
outside of parentheses, we have to use the distributive property, which means we're gonna multiply this one times that one, and then this one times that one. So two times 20 is going to be 40. The sign will just come down, minus, and two times x is 2x equals, and we'll do the same thing over here. We'll multiply our outboard constant by this value here, and then our outboard constant by this value here. Eight times 30 is 240, and it's multiplied by your variable x, so they can both come down together. That's gonna be eight times 30 x is 240 x minus, minus comes down, eight times 13 is 104. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna get all the x's on the left side and all the non x's on the right side. So to do that, we're gonna to have to subtract 240 x from this side and we're going to have to do the same thing over here. So we're gonna to have to subtract 240x from this side. And then to get our 40 over here, we'll have to subtract 40 from there. And we'll have to add, we'll have to subtract 40 from over here. Okay, so 240 positive and negative 240x and negative 240x, those are gonna cancel and 40 and negative 40, those are going to cancel. So this will be much easier now. So we've got negative 2x minus 240x. Now, because these are both attached to an x of the same exponent, like this is just 2x, it's not like 2x3 and this is x2 or something. It's just 2x and 240x. So since they're like terms, like terms, we can just combine them. So that's gonna be negative 242x. And that is equal to negative 140 minus 40. I'm sorry, negative 104 minus 40. So if we come over here to do negatives on this calculator, you'd say negative. It gives you the negative sign. And it's negative 104 minus 40. And that gives us negative 144. Over here, negative 144. So, negative 242x is equal to negative 144. So now, to get our value of x, we're gonna divide by negative 242. We're going to divide by negative 242. Remember, anything that you do to one side, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So, that's going to cancel these. And we're going to be left with x equal to negative 144 divided by negative 242. Now, when you have negative on numerator and negative on denominator, those can cancel out. And you'll be left with x equal to 144 over 242. Now, we just do that division there, and we're going to find out that x is equal to 144 divided by 242 or 0 0.6. Well, the, the, the concern though, so the, the John continuing Final works answer. with FBS, you compile and everything. Okay, number five, we are given an expression. X squared plus five X plus six is equal to zero, and we're asked to solve for X. Well, we can recognize the standard form here for a quadratic equation in that it's a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, where a is equal to one, b is equal to five, and c is equal to six. So for this standard form of a quadratic equation, we'll use the quadratic formula. That's going to be x equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four times a times c divided by two a. Now, 
Remember, because you have this plus minus sign here, it means you're gonna end up with two solutions, okay? So let's go through it here. Oh, real quick, you wanna remember this formula, okay? I mean, let's not make it too tough, all right? x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Negative b. b was 5. So that's going to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's going to be 5 squared minus four times a, a is one, times c, c is six. And that's all over two times a, a is one. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. We're going to say x equal to negative five plus or minus the square root of five squared is five times five, 25, minus four times one times six. Four times one is four, four times six is 24. And then this will be all over two A, and that's just going to be two times one, which is two. All right, let's simplify even further. X equal to negative five plus or minus 25 minus 24 oh, is four, so one. Right. So we're left with the square root of one divided by two. The square root of one is one. So we'll be over here, negative five plus or minus one divided by two. And now we need to partition because we have the plus side. And we have the minus side. So let's go on the plus side. It's going to be negative 5 plus 1 divided by 2. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2 is equal to negative 2. Let's go to the minus side. Negative 5 minus 1 divided by 2. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 over 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Therefore, final answer is going to be x equal to negative 2 and negative 3. Right here. Okay, number 6. We're given two vectors. Remember this little arrow over the variable just tells you that it's a vector, not just a single value. Vector V has three components. It has an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. X is two, Y is negative 20, Z is six. And we have vector U, which also has three components. 17, x equal to 17, y equal to negative 7, z equal to 9. Now, here's a little side note. Let's pay attention to the dimensions of this vector. It's always number of rows times number of columns. So the rows go first. Right now we have one row. So we have one row. And we have one, two, three columns. So vector V is a one by three vector. Vector U has one row and three columns. So it is also a one by three. Okay, let's solve for V plus U, vector V plus vector U. Vector V equal to two, negative 20, six vector u equal to 17 negative seven nine because they're the same dimensions we can just treat this like a regular 
addition problem. Two plus 17 is 19. Negative 20 plus negative seven is negative 27. And six plus nine is 15. We'll put it in brackets and then we will say vector V plus vector U is equal to 19, negative 27, 15. Okay, part B will solve vector U minus vector V. Now, remember, because we're using addition subtraction here and we have the same dimensions for our two matrices, we can set them up just like basic addition and subtraction. So we'll say vector U equal to 17, negative seven, nine, and vector V equal to two, negative 20, six. And we'll set this up for this time subtraction. 17 minus two is 15. Negative seven minus negative 20. When it's minus a minus, that becomes positive. So this is negative seven plus 20, which is 13. And then we have nine minus six, which is three. Bracket that up and we have vector U minus vector V equal to 15, 13, three. All right. All right, final question here, number seven. We are given two vectors and we need to solve for the dot product of vector V dot vector U. Vector V is one row, three columns. So one row, three columns. And vector U is one row, three columns. Let's just confirm we have the same dimensions on our two vectors. So let's get our dot product. Let's say you have two vectors, vector W equal to little a, little b, little c. And then you have vector z equal to big A, big B, big C. If you wanted to solve for the dot product, w dot z, you would be looking at little a times big A. plus little b, big B, plus, you got it, little c, big C. And this does not become in brackets because a dot product is a scalar quantity, okay? So we're just creating this equation based on this general form, and all we have to do now is substitute in our values. We're looking for the dot of V, dot u and that's going to be equal to 2 times 17 plus b to b negative 20 times negative 7 negative 20 negative 7 plus little c to big c 6 times 9 All right, now let's just do some multiplication and addition here. Two times 17 is 34. Plus, remember, negative times negative is positive. Negative 20 times negative seven is 140. And six times nine is 54. So to solve for the dot product, V dot U, we'll just add these up. We got 34 plus 140 plus 54, 228, final answer.
but it's, it's, it's all right. China, that's fine. And that's how we roll with trig and a little bit of vectors. Vector of six.